COVID is dangerous. That is why the high and mighty and the rich and powerful won't be having any swanky gatherings where they could get COVID because it's dangerous. And they certainly won't be holding parties all the way through lockdown and quarantine because COVID's dangerous. How many times have I got to tell you? <coughs> Hello there, you 5.6 million awakening wonders. Together we voyage towards unity and light while always remembering that for us to truly have democracy, we're going to have to have it in confederacy, not centralised systems of power, which will always become corrupt and end up serving elites. How many times have I got to tell you? If you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe right now. Also turn on the notification bell so you know whenever I'm sending you a message in case the platform changes its algorithm and it somehow is punitive to us. And also I'm going to give you a link to my mailing list so you can stay in touch with us off this platform in case we ever require that. You listening to me yet? All right, let's see what's been going on over the last couple of years. There's a COVID pandemic. It's bad for you. That's why you've got to stay in your house and do whatever you're told forever. All right. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm saying it is bad. That's why you've got to do whatever you're told forever. So there certainly won't be some swanky White House correspondence dinner that loads of people will turn up at and suddenly COVID don't exist anymore. And add to that the idea that there were parties, I'm talking about British politics, the whole way through lockdown from leaders of both parties. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, White House correspondence dinner and let's have a look at what does it mean if they're not sort of scared of getting COVID, what does that mean? Last Saturday, Trevor Noah stood before a ballroom of 2,600 journalists, celebrities and political figures at what he called the nation's most distinguished super spreader event. This week, a growing number of attendees, including a string of journalists and Anthony J. Blinken, the Secretary of State, said they had tested positive for coronavirus. Now, I know a lot of you have loads of views about coronavirus. I, of course, don't have any views about coronavirus. I don't you know, I don't know what you should do for your health or how you should treat or regard situations like that. I've been pretty clear about that because you have to be on these platforms. It's not, I'm not allowed to have opinions on those things. And I don't mind not having one because this is what I truly believe. I'll say it as delicately as I can. I feel that a pandemic is something that obviously affects many, many, many people. Many people will have different considerations, priorities. So there'll be perfectly reasonable arguments on both sides. There'll be people saying, hang on a minute, I don't like anything that grants more power to centralised authority authorities. And there'll be some people that say human life is sacred and we must do whatever we can to protect human life. So if uh, taken sincerely, both of those points are valid. The growing number of cases presented another sign of an official Washington that has largely returned to pre-pandemic routines, even as officials still urge Americans to take precautions and has decided to live with the results. OK, for the last couple of years, we've lived, let's face it, in unusual times, times where the media have been vehement and confident and unforgiving in their condemnation of people that wouldn't comply absolutely with all suggested government measures. If you don't get vaccinated as frequently as demanded and boosted as often as suggested and as masked up as rigorously as possible and as locked down in as absolute a way as is conceivable, then you are an enemy of the state. Now, I accept because I listen to a wide range of differing opinions that science continually evolves and therefore what's considered to be right on a Monday might not be considered to be right on a Tuesday. Now, I don't have any opinions on whether you should or should not get vaccinated. But what the actions of the powerful suggest, just taken with regard to this dinner, forget all the parties throughout the pandemic of within British politics and the other events you're aware of, the governor of California, all that stuff having do's and parties. What it suggests is they, and that's it, what it says in this article, is they've decided to live with the consequences. They've made an adult decision. So if they've made that decision for themselves, why can't you make that decision for yourself? That's the question I'm asking. I'd like to be governed by people that participate in the democracy that they want me to live in. That's what I'd like. I'd like to think we all live in this democracy together. I don't want that you live in democracy plus and we live in democracy light. We should all live in it. Don't accept government from people that are not affected by the decisions that they make, not affected by the consequences of their own power, not affected by the consequences of their own corruption. Let's forget the fact that the whole gala of the White House Correspondents' Dinner shows you that the media and the establishment are one coalescent force bludgeoning you into a state of compliant idiocy with apparent opposition. Oh, we don't like the ones that have got a donkey on their jumper. I don't like the ones that have got an elephants on their umbrella. They are all basically the same. And in the tiny, tiny fissures of disagreement, they'll have a little firework party of conflict. Meanwhile, 
absolute obedience, compliance, and total agreement on the majority of issues. That's a type of tyranny. If you don't have a choice, what is that? That's a kind of a dictatorship, a dictatorship with good TV channels, except for when it comes to the news. So really what I'm saying is, is if, if they know that they're safe to have that White House correspondence dinner because they could probably deal with the consequences of coronavirus and can make a conscious, adult, sentient, bloody, autonomous decision for themselves, why can't you do that? Because you're an idiot, is the assumption. They're not idiots, you are. You will make the wrong decision, they'll make the right decision. So when you see a politician in shirt sleeves, having a beer and a curry, or you hear about what's going on in Downing Street in England, or the various um, transgressions throughout the American political establishment, then you, the reason it makes you angry is because you know what it suggests. It suggests that the rules are for you. Those are your rules. You do what you're told. And if you don't, you'll be shamed, vilified and punished. Meanwhile, we'll do what we need to do. Now, when you also know that political figures have financial relationships with the institutions that ultimately determine the direction of American and global political life, it's frustrating because you think, hold on, these are meant to be our elected representatives, not their paid for representatives, but we've worked out, haven't we, by now, how democracy really works. The White House correspondent that dinner seems to me like a cosy little club. If you can have them parties and still tell Americans to observe precautions, really what's playing out is what happened in microcosm across the pandemic. You do this, we're going to do that. Now they've at least got the stones to do it in broad daylight, to literally fill a ballroom with journalists and political figures and media figures. And they're not even pretending anymore. At least the pretense is starting to erode. Journalists across several major news organisations reported testing positive. CNN reported that those infected also included staff members from its network, as well as NBC News, CBS and Politico. Oh no, where will we get our truth from? CNN staff members there, remember how they talked about the pandemic and how they talked about unvaccinated people? I wonder if they'll be condemning on air their own staff. Mark Leibovich, a reporter for The Atlantic who attended the dinner and who spoke briefly with Mr Blinken at a gathering the day before, said there was an expectation that some guests would test positive. There was a kind of cruise ship vibe to the dinner, said Mr. Leibovich. But it shouldn't be. What type of cruise? Hey, we're on a cruise ship. Hey, you slot on the shore. Fuck you. We don't get COVID on here. Oh, is that an iceberg? Who cares? Fuck you. Stay indoors. Stay indoors. What are they saying from over there on the cruise ship? I think they're saying stay indoors. I can't hear from the clinking of champagne glasses. He added that once guests were inside the ballroom, there was no escape from the crowd. Once you're in the ballroom, that's it. I mean, it's one of the challenges of everyday life. Darling, join me in the ballroom. Room. Oh my god, it's mayhem in here. Quick, seek refuge with the polo ponies! The Post reported that some White House officials were worried that safety measures for the dinner were insufficient. Like, the one place where they could have been stringent about, like, safety measures, because they're there, they weren't stringent. So what does that tell you they think about safety measures? Very good at, oh, use lot, do some safety measures. Swave yourselves in masks and sanitizers. Oh, right, so you'll be doing that when you have a dinner then. How dare you? We're stinking rich. The virus will take one look at my wallet and do an about turn. Attendees at the White House Correspondents' Dinner are generally privileged and well-connected people. Oh, that's interesting. It's not full of hillbillies and hicks and poor people and trailer park trash and the undesirables and the many people that are condemned and criticised and the majority of people that are unvaccinated, broadly speaking, drawn from those demographics. Oh, what a coincidence. I suppose what this reveals is there is not one society that we are all participating in. There are tiered societies, separate societies. There are establishment elites and establishment elites do not have to play by the same rules because they're not playing the same game. This is Caitlin Johnston writing on her substack. The weekend's White House correspondence dinner saw a gaggle of media celebrities congregate to congratulate one another on what great job they've been doing bravely telling the truth and holding the most powerful government on earth to account. The host, Trevor Noah of The Daily Show, gushed with enthusiasm about how much freedom the press have in America to say things the powerful don't like. I've met Trevor Noah, he's a decent guy and a good comic and I've got nothing against Trevor Noah at all and that's the kind of gig that I would have done one day and you know I recognise the reason I'm not doing it now is because no one would ever ask me to do that for thousands of reasons. So like I'm not criticising Trevor Noah because there's a amnesty among comedians, we, I'm cool, he's my brother on the path. But the event itself man, pff, what is it? It's like a back slapping bull crap that reveals the true nature of that reality. There ain't nothing to lose in there. No one's going to go out and say, you're corrupt, you're corrupt. The reason we're here is to honour and celebrate the fourth estates and what you stand for. An additional check and balance that holds power to account and gives voice to those who otherwise wouldn't have one. Look no further than what's happening in Ukraine, said Noah. 
In America, you have the right to seek the truth and speak the truth, even if it makes people in power uncomfortable. You understand how amazing that is? I stood here tonight and made fun of the President of the United States of America, and I'm going to be fine. Well, that's not exactly how I would see that situation. I could come up with a pretty comprehensive list of things that you wouldn't be able to say safely at that White House Correspondents' Dinner. Not because they're not true, not because they're conspiracy theories, not because they're crackpot stuff, but because they're the kind of conversations that when they're had make you lose faith and trust in the establishment and create tension and make people feel that there needs to be significant institutional change in the way that democracy is run. Ah, Caitlin Johnson has a good example of just such a thing here. Of course there are people that have said things that US presidents don't like who are not in fact fine. Julian Assange continues to waste away in Belmarsh prison as the US government continues its efforts to extradite him. Edward Snowden, an American, remains in exile. Daniel Hale, also an American, sits in prison for exposing the depravity of America's monstrous drone program. If they were hosting the White House Correspondents' Dinner, mask or no mask, I would say that is an example of a functioning democracy. To have Assange and Snowden and Daniel Hale in there, then you say, bloody hell, this is a little bit tense, isn't it? Well, I mean, how's Joe Biden going to deal with this? And coming up next, it's the guy that fixes Hunter Biden's laptop. Trevor Noah did not mention these people or the many others who have been persecuted, silenced, imprisoned and killed for saying things that the powerful individuals who govern the US don't approve of. Far from providing an additional check and balance that holds power to account and gives voice to those who otherwise wouldn't have one, as Noah claims, the people in his audience on Saturday night are tasked with manipulating public thought in facilitation of the interests of the powerful. Yeah, the establishment, generally speaking, isn't comfortable with being critiqued and criticised. You've surely noticed that surveillance is on the rise, that data capture is on the rise, and that censorship and the ability to protest are being eroded and diminished. The government power is increasing. The ability to shut down uh, dissent is increasing. So I don't know, man, that we've got too much to pat each other on the back for. I would say that this event is the opposite of what is being claimed within the event itself, that it's not a demonstration that there is healthy debate and overt criticism of the establishment, but that there is broad agreement within the establishment of what is acceptable. That as long as you're a participant in what I would call kind of liberal elite metropolitan democracy, then there is all sorts of diversity within that. But if you start to actually attack establishment values, the relationships between media, big corporations and the state, the kind of subjects that are never allowed to be discussed within those circles. And just hear that list again, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, Daniel Hale. You've witnessed how reporting around the, the war, reporting around the pandemic, and I'm not claiming to understand either of those situations better than you or better than anybody else, but I have noticed certain trends in how the information is presented and controlled that lead me to believe that the White House gala is much more of uh, tuxedos on, masks off, pat each other on the back, clinking of champagne glasses event rather than a sign of a healthy democracy. I mean, you could say that at a time of this kind of suffering, fragmentation, fear and doubt, that all of these galas and balls are disgusting, really. <laughs> I mean, that's one conclusion you could come to. Which is why the President of the United States, when he took to the podium that night, had nothing but friendly words for the mainstream press. What's clear, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is that you, the free press, matter more than you ever did in the last century, Biden said. We've all seen the courage of Ukrainian people because of the courage of American reporters in this room. Well, another perspective on that is you could just take a look at the career of Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Chris Hedges, who 10 years ago worked at the New York Times, but today he's having all his content pulled off of YouTube because he was on RT, talking to like Edward Snowden and Slavoj Zizek. He wasn't like going, Russia's great, isn't it? It's like a war correspondent who's won a Pulitzer Prize, who now could never work for the New York Times because the New York Times is a mouthpiece for power and will only criticise power within a certain context. And if you're struggling for an image, a metaphor for how to look at the context within which the media will happily criticise the establishment, imagine a ballroom with 2,600 people in it, wearing glitzy gowns and tuxedos, pretending to have ribald jokes about one another, but actually all going home with limos from the same limo firm, drinking the same champagne, thinking the same thoughts. The past weekend also saw a friendly gathering of brave four for state truth warriors and political and government operatives in the US empire at a party hosted by the billionaire owner of the neocon war propaganda rag, The Atlantic. 
Yep. When you see an empire propagandist fraternising with a CIA director while surrounded by media celebrities and government insiders at a party hosted by a media-owning plutocrat, you know you're in a country where power is held to account. Yeah, that's sort of the reality, isn't it? That is the reality. We're used to being kind of distracted by apparent conflict and apparent criticism and apparent diversity, but just listen to that description of what was really taking place. This is your dying empire, America. This is your end stage capitalism. This is your dystopia in all its weird, phony, stupid glory. Well, Kathleen Johnston not pulling any punches there. And it's difficult to look at something like that White House correspondence dinner and feel optimistic about democracy. For a long time, I felt there is no real dissent within the establishment. Any dissent within the establishment ultimately has the same aim as the object of its descent, the sustenance of establishment power. You're going to have to look outside of that to find real descent. And by God, you'll find it here. Let me know in the comments below what I've missed that you would like to see brought to the forefront. Give us a like, subscribe to this channel, hit us up in the comments below. We read the comments and we respond to them. Turn on your notification bell. Sign up to my mailing list, you know, in case I ever need to communicate with you off this channel. I need direct access to you. There's a link to that there. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. More important than any of that, please stay free.